You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com Podcast Network. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Super excited that you're about to watch this amazing video. If you don't know who I am, my name is Steven Daniels, and I am the host of Clock Blockers, the number one Miami fan show, as well as That's Another Miami Dolphins First Down podcast, and me, myself, and this guy with Dougley Do Wrong and Steven Daniels. If you're watching this right now, do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel if you've not already subscribed. Make sure you hit the bell notification. That way you get notified anytime we go live here on Dolphins Talk or new video drops. If you like this video along the way, do me a huge favor. Do me two huge favors. Hit the like button and share the link. Let people know about us. We can't grow without your help. Now, enjoy this video about your favorite football team, the Miami Dolphins. Welcome back to another episode, an exclusive episode of Clock Blockers on the Clock with Stephen Daniels, myself, and Jason Sarney. Uh, we have a great special edition, great, great special episode lined up for you. Getting tongue twisted here. Um, and we 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 started this new series with the NFL draft upon us. And today we're going to be covering defensive tackles and defensive line. But before we get started, uh, let me introduce my good friend, uh, Jason Sarney. What's up, Jason? I got to tell you, Stephen, I'm loving life. A couple of days before the draft, just this is the best time of season with all sports cooking, the draft, basketball playoffs, hockey playoffs. Can't complain. How's everything on your end? Dude, everything is great, and and I'm excited about it. And uh, you know, around this time of year, things are moving, things are shaking, and there's just a lot of content. And and so my head is in 15 million different places sometimes. But I am excited about this because you know, look, the Miami Dolphins are kind of in a very unique situation right now, right? You lose Christian Wilkins to free agency, right? And you have two great pass rushers who probably are going to start the season on the DL. We'll see what happens with Phillips, but it more than likely is going to start the season on the on the DL. And so it kind of leaves this empty void um, to be able to bring in somebody potentially through the draft. What are your thoughts about this and what the Dolphins should or need to do? Well, the Dolphins should address losses, which is, you know, sacks, whether it be on the edge or within the interior. I just hope that's what they do in one of those first two picks. Now, they have a first rounder for the first time in two seasons. It's nice that they have a first and second rounder, but the issue is that they don't have a third and a fourth, which hurts in this particular draft. I think there's a lot of players, Stephen, that if you decide to pass on a position of need if you're Miami, there are really palatable players uh, on offensive line, wide receiver, edge, safety in the third and fourth round. So it almost kind of forces the Dolphins to really make the right decision on the first and the second because that's obvious. You want to hit those. You have to hit those. And quite simply, the Dolphins have not had those, nor have they hit on their initial picks in their last couple of drafts, meaning third rounder and Channing Tindall from two seasons ago, last year's Cam Smith. They have not been contributors at all, uh, so that needs to change this go-around. All right. Well, let's dive right into it because there's about 10 players we're going to talk about today, and we're going to start with the very first one, and that is one of my favorite names in the entire draft, Jerzon Newton, a defensive tackle. He's six foot three, 304 pounds out of Illinois. Tell us a little bit about Jerzon. He can also go by Johnny, so we can call him Jerzon, a.k.a. Johnny Newton. And here comes Johnny, man. He is a guy who can literally replace Christian Wilkins, and we could not miss a beat, theoretically. Uh, I'm not saying he's going to come on in and produce the exact numbers that Christian Wilkins did in what got him paid, that enormous contract, but he enters with very similar versatility. He is an overall very solid based defensive tackle who could play outside on the end. He is equal parts, very good pass rusher, very good run stuffer. So if you have to sprinkle in all the good attributes that you want for a potential Christian Wilkins attribute without one side of things, whether it be pass rusher or run stuffer tipping the scale, he is probably the best of both worlds. 
You know, he is the overall combo. I think that is the best three tech interior lineman with versatility that could replace Christian Wilkin. Now he has been dropping. So if the Dolphins decide to get risky and trade back and land him at 25, 6, 7, 8, we're talking A plus 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 plus. If they love him and they get him at 21, I don't think anyone's gonna have a problem. Nor will I really. But hey, look, if you can if you can definitely move backwards and be able to land somebody of that caliber and also gain other draft picks, that's always a plus too. And 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 I think there's a good portion or a good sediment of the fan base that that would be their best thing that the Dolphins can do this upcoming Thursday is draft or is trading back from 21. Um, and so I, I I think you're onto something there. Next up is is Byron Murphy the second. Byron Murphy uh, is somebody that is from Texas. He's played in some big games over the years. What do you like about Byron Murphy, and uh, why is he somebody that made your list? I, there's nothing not to like. I mean, he's an absolute freak monster of an athlete. He's a little undersized, you know, at six feet, but he, he makes up for it in just raw athletic ability. He, he's, quite frankly, like a mini Aaron Donald in monstrous form. Okay. Not saying he's Aaron <laughs> Donald. But if there's like a mini him, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? He's just an absolute monster. Just, an, just a freakazoid, you know? Well, look, I, I think that Texas has some really good players because the very next one that we're going to talk about is his teammate, uh, Tavondre uh, Sweat. And look, he's six foot four, 366 pounds. Talk about a beast of a man. Tavondre is somebody that is up on a lot of people's boards. Why did you like uh, Mr. Sweat? No, I, I like him for his ability to just stuff the run. You know, he is a, a run stuffer. Like I said, there's going to be linemen who maybe tip the scale a little bit in one attribute rather than the other. I mean, this dude's a massive body to anchor a rush defense. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he's going to be like a nose tackle. And he probably will be a nose tackle. Could be the uh, three tech. But if the Dolphins want him, you know, he could be an anchor to play in that middle of the line. You know, I don't know how much versatility uh, like his teammate or uh, like a Newton he could have, but uh, absolute run stuff. Well, let me tell you, six foot four, 366 pounds. He becomes one of the biggest guys in all of the NFL. Like he's up there. He, he's a monster of a man. And, um, I mean, hell, I, I got to be honest, man. I, I, I would love to have somebody as big as him as a run stopper on the defensive line. Dipping down the board a little bit, uh, I, I don't know if there's any, uh, as you say, or as I like to say, extracurricular activity. You know, there's been some blotters out there on the socials that there's been some issue. Uh, look, I'm going to say this much right now. If they go – not on defense, they go offensive line in the first, and this guy's floating 55, and some of these other guys that we've talked about and maybe we'll talk about are gone, and he's there. It's a run the ticket up. You can't pass if you're Miami when you lose Christian Wilkins on a guy who could literally anchor your rush defense for four years. Now, again, four years if it's the second round. I don't know if he's a first-round pick. I, I don't I think, think so. He's, I don't think he's a yeah. first-round pick. I, no. think, I think he's a – Second round, and and I've heard some of the same things you have. He could even slip to the third, and and if that I see a, I see a bad dip. Yeah, I, look, I know we don't currently have a third round pick, but I would love to see the Dolphins trade back from twenty one in an ideal situation uh, with the right offer, and if we could gain a third round pick from that, which I, I don't know is possible or not, but if we could, if Andre would be if he's there with the third round. I'd be running up the ticket, as you said. You see that? That's a good. Uh, it's a good segue and a good kind of sidebar to this because, oh my God, if the Dolphins can get one more pick in the top 100, and that takes you through all those compensatory picks, which is a yes. couple of picks through the third round, and then yes. you hit 100, and then 101 is the fourth round. Even if they get into the fourth round in the top 15 picks, you could wait. On a, on a receiver. You could wait on an edge rusher, and that could be your area. There's two or three edge rushers in that 80 to 105 area that you can get. Sweat, if he falls, 
I don't know. Maybe you sprinkle a trade from next year's slot of picks to move up a little bit in the second or the third if you get in there another way. He is a guy that will be in play if he starts to fall. Someone could trade up to get him. Totally understand. Totally understand. All right. Let's stay in Florida and go to FSU. Braden Fisk, a defensive mm. tackle. He, he's six foot four, 292 pounds. What do you like about Braden Fisk? What do we all love in Miami generally for this team? What is like the calling card? It's speed. We yes. love speed. And this guy reminds me, like, he's like, I'll tell you what. He would be an awesome combination on the line with Zach Sealer because he's got the same kind of motor and he's like a faster version of him. Like he won the 40 in terms of all defensive tackles at the combine, was the fastest in the 40, right? So he's got a tremendous – it's almost like if you mix Sealer's raw strength with Andrew Van Ginkle's speed and motor, and that's your player. Look, I, I think it would I think it would be a great pick for us to have. Um, I, I like him. I've seen him play a couple of times um, through FSU, watching those games in the ACC, and I, I think he's a hell of a player. And and look, if he, I, I think he's probably a third round pick. Would you say that he's probably a third round pick? Oh no, he's escalating. Uh, with he's his, escalating. Yeah, with his speed and his ability to create pressure, high motor speed from the interior. Uh, I think you can get six, seven sacks on the regular in the NFL. Um, so I think he's creeping up the second round, and I do believe he is absolutely in play. If he is available at 55, I would love to see what other player, <laughs> what other players are available if they would pass on him. Because if he's in play and there are other players that we've spoken about gone and they haven't addressed the position yet, Oh, man, uh, him, Sealer, and the rotation of guys that they brought in whom I really believe are kind of more Raekwon Davis replacements. Yeah. You know, and your Gil or your, 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 your Neville Gilmore is your uh, Benito Jones who's making a comeback appearance with us. You know, no one's replaced Christian Wilkins yet. I don't think anyone really, really, truly will. Uh, but this guy, Newton, we've named some guys who were kind of close. Yeah. All right, let's let's uh, let's go. Look, you and I have done a few of these things, and we always bring up Michigan, guys, because of the relation with our owner, Stephen Ross. Chris Jenkins, a defensive tackle. Uh, he's six two, 208 pounds. He a championship caliber player on a championship team. What do you like about Chris Jenkins? I like him a lot uh, for his leadership skills, his pedigree. His dad played in the NFL as a pro bowler. Uh, I think he was even an all pro. But uh, very, he is, I guess, the next best thing to Newton. All right? You know, you have a guy who's very versatile in terms of doing everything that he can do in terms of being a mini Wilkins to come on in. I know I've mentioned Wilkins with all these guys, really. But – the two guys that fit the bill of who could be the next Christian to me would be either Newton in the first or Jenkins in the second. To me, those are your two if there needs to be a Wilkins. Now, the irony here, the coincidence, whatever you want to say, is we brought this up on another show. Chris Jenkins – I'm sorry, Chris Greer. I'm mixing names. Chris Greer yep. loves to draft – NCAA champions while they're champions going into their draft year. And he started that run as four, no, four out of the last five years. He's done that, right? Correct. And he started that. He actually started that in 2018 with Mika Fitzpatrick, but there was another guy over him in Mike, Mike Canada. But as an absolute boss in that war room, 2019, he brings in Christian Wilkins champion from Clemson. It's full circle time. It's five years later. I agree. It, look, it, and let me say this before we go on to the next person. If we want to be a championship team, and that's what we want to be, we need to have championship caliber players. And having a guy like Chris Jenkins, who's played for Harbaugh, who's run an NFL-style type defense and played in some really big games over the last few years, bringing a guy like him who could probably start right away, I would probably think. He'd have the opportunity to anyway. Um, yeah. you know, he, he could be such a huge asset and I would love, uh, look, Jenkins is one of my favorite players at DT. One of my favorite. He's not a big guy for that position, 
but he's one of my favorite, and I think he could be really good in the NFL. All right, let's uh, let's go to uh, the next player. That is Mr. Jared Verse, edge rusher out of FSU. Um, and look, you know, I, I go back again. A guy played in the ACC, um, you know, played for FSU. FSU always played in some big games. What do you like about Jared Verse? Speed, same thing as his teammate in Florida. Yeah, he, he went to Albany to start his career and like literally destroyed the conference, just, just nuclear bomb that conference and was just a f- force. And going to Florida State, he didn't miss a beat. Absolute pass rush stud, um, fastest edge rusher in the combine. Uh, he would be a sensational instant sack artist for the Dolphins. If he's there at 21, that's the, don't even don't even let five seconds drop off the clock. Don't even let a nanosecond drop off the clock. Sprint the ticket up. All right, on the clock special edition clock blockers episode right here on Dolphins Talk. If you're watching us right now, do me a huge favor and hit the like button, share the link, and you can comment as you watch. If there's something that you agreed with Jason or disagreed with or myself. Put it in the comments section. We want to go back and forth with you. Have good, healthy, and fun debate here on Dolphins Talk. So make sure you guys do that and check that out. Uh, all right, let's go on to the next player. Uh, Muhammad Kamara, edge rusher out of Colorado State, six foot one, 248 pounds. What do you like about Muhammad? This is a day too late or early day three guy. I love him as your if, – if career goes smaller school, you know, if career goes non-power five, you know, if he goes a little bit of, like, that smaller pedigree, I think he's the last edge rusher off the board until it takes a major dip. He's a little smaller than the other edge rushers, but he is massively fast uh, in comparison to the others um, for his speed and size combination. He's so quick off the ball, probably the best athlete – you know, amongst those speed rushers, you know, he's just an absolute freak. So, yeah, I love him coming out of Colorado State. If they can get an extra third-round pick, or I'll tell you what, they trade their 2025 third-rounder and a sixth-round pick this year, and he's the pick. He – it almost reminds me of – I know a little bit different. Let's go back to a linebacker a long time ago. The Dolphins traded up to draft Marlon Greenwood. A, a linebacker who just had a very fine run for a couple of years with the Dolphins, ended up having a hell of a career uh, also through a couple of seasons with the Texans. So, uh, yeah, I would trade up for a guy like Muhammad Kamara if he's in, like, 95-100 and the Dolphins could make a move. Trade right. up. Uh, w- one of the uh, coolest jerseys in all of college football is Houston's in the powder blues. And the next player we're going to talk about is Nelson Cesar, uh, edge rusher, six foot three, two hundred and fifty four pounds. What do you like about Nelson besides that beautiful powder blue uniform that he wears? Oh, you gotta love that. I mean, that's like literally an instant jersey get if you like getting college gear from Dolphins yeah. that you have. You know, I'll tell you what, he's got a he's got a heck of a story. It's not a very happy story, you know. Uh, yeah, do your own. Due, when I say things like this, do your own due diligence. Early tragedies in his life, kind of forced him into being a man early. You know, he got his way to play football. Football had kind of led his path after what had happened. He lost both of his parents young, I believe. So, uh, you know, his ability to kind of focus on football and kind of persevere, he's got that, no horrible pun intended, he's got that edge to him, right? He's got that, he's gone through the woods, you know, so to speak. So uh, uh, it's something that you want to hear his name called, number one. He's a day three kind of guy, maybe. Round three creeps up into that day two area in the back end. But uh, if he slips to the fifth. Hey, let me let me tell you. I was about to say, if he slips to the fifth. If he slips to the fifth and the Dolphins have not addressed the edge yet, no, it's because of him. I'll, I'll do you one better. Even if they have addressed the edge rusher, I still would double down and go get him. That's how much I like Nelson on day three. I'll tell you the reason why I don't have a problem with that is because they essentially lost 46 sacks from last year. Yeah. You're right. 100%. 100%. And included in that number is the injured edges that we're hopefully getting back at one point and both of them in the season. Phillips will get back hopefully in September, October, that area it looks like for sure. But uh, between Phillips and Chubb, that was like you know 20 sacks without them 
being injured. That was, they were going to get to 10 each. Chubb was there. So a lot uh, of sacks yeah, they throw place. I, I agree with you, and, and I, I, I'm excited to see what happens this year when they do come and they're on the field and they're healthy together and whoever that new person's going to be, including the next guy we're going to talk about because if the Dolphins have an opportunity to get this guy, let me tell you something, Jason Sarney. I am going to be uh, doing flips. I'm going to be cheering from the top of my roof and lungs. Mr. Chop Robinson, edge rusher at Penn State. I can tell you right now, there is not enough good things to say about this guy. He is one of my favorite players in the draft, period. Tell me about Chop Robinson. He's one of your favorite players. In the draft. I want to know why he's one of your favorite players. <laughs> well, look. I'm, I'm turning it on you. No, well, look, for me, I, here, here's the thing for me. I think in college football, if you can replicate as best as possible an NFL experience or a very uh, really hectic atmosphere, it's somebody who plays in these big environments. And if you play for Penn State, you played in some of the biggest games in all of college football with some of the biggest crowds. And so having a guy like that when we're in New York or New England or Buffalo or anywhere where there's just that hostile crowd he is somebody that you want to have and already on your team because and by the way he's played in the cold too and so that that you know look we're playing at green bay this year who knows when that game's gonna be so having a guy like that who can rush the passer and in the today's game of football i'm gonna tell you right now if you don't have a good pass rush you're not going to win too many football games and a guy like chop robinson at six foot three 254 pounds I'm telling you right now, he's going to be a star in the NFL. Yeah, what do you need me for? I, I look, I love him. He's the fa he, to me, he's like the second fastest, quickest, pure edge rusher next to Verse, literally. Yeah. Uh, and listen, you got to love a guy who can come on in, like you said, from a, a power school like Penn State. Yep. Essentially, it's the you know, there's a couple of schools from an atmosphere: Alabama, Michigan, Penn State. You know, from an atmosphere are almost like NFL playoff scenarios, you know? So yeah. to have a guy like him come in with a major needed edge rusher, and you know what? What would be, what I would love, he could get off to such a good, metaphorically speaking, his first step is explosive. Once the ball is snapped, he could be at the quarterback. Uh -huh. So if he gets to such a good start of his rookie year, where it's almost like most rookies would hit a wall, you know what? Hey, chop, chop. We got Chubb and Phillips now back. Take a breather. We're going to rotate you in. So I'm you're you might right dip now. in Chubb, snap Brad, count. Bradley, Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips, and Chop Robinson would easily be the best pass rusher group in the NFL. That by, would be by far. It wouldn't even um, be close. It wouldn't what even it would close. do. What it would do, and you know, I don't look, I don't love looking into the future and, and cutting players off of a team or just whatever. But Chop would become JP, and JP would become Bradley Chubb in a perfect world oh, in yeah. the future. So you're not missing a beat I know. because you could also, and, like and, you and, said, and me, and get me, another edge development. We got one more player to talk about. We're going to talk yep. about him in a minute, but. It's interesting, right? Because at 21, I, I, I think if I had my pick, I'd want to go offensive line. And I've always yeah. said that I feel like, to me, that that's very important. But I'm going to tell you right now, if the Dolphins go with either Chop or the guy that we're getting ready to talk about, at 21, I'm clapping. Like, I'm just like, let's go. We're ready to go. And and I'm going to believe in what we're, we're going to be doing because the game of football – you have to rattle the quarterback in order to win a game. And the Miami Dolphins have the winningest record against the GOAT, that is Tom Brady. They won 12 games against him in his career. If I'm correct, it is the only NFL team to be in double digits and wins against Tom Brady. I could be wrong. There might be one other one, but I think we are one maybe two teams to ever win double digit wins against Brady. And part of the success against Brady all those years was putting him on the butt, on his butt, putting him on the grass, making him upset and touching him and making and making him feel uncomfortable, okay? Chop Robinson does that to players, 
And I'm telling you right now, no matter where Chop Robinson goes, he's going to be a pro bowler. He's going to it, it, he's got a chance to have a stellar NFL career. Stellar. I, I agree with you. You know, it's funny because you, know, you mentioned guys in there where there's guys at 21 who are a hit. And then guys, if you can move back to 25, 26 and still get them. Yep. Chop Robinson is in that category because I, I, I it's almost like it's like if you're doing uh, if you're watching old Wall Street or Boiler Room, you know I, I like my 21, but I love the 26. Yeah, you know, and it's yeah. like it's such a different because that 26 comes with another player, and it can come with your developmental left tackle, or it can come with your wide receiver. So a lot of intrigue in Chop Robinson, and can I institute it that if we get Chop Robinson, we are bringing the Braves? Oh, 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 oh. Oh yeah, one hundred. I mean, that's that the easiest thing in the world. That's like, coming, that's baby. The thing in the world. We're doing, or 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 maybe we're doing the chop. Maybe the chop when he makes a tackle. You know, I, I don't know, but I'm I, telling I, you right. I, I like this, Stephen. I don't. I, I like this. Party, it's nice and party. Party. What I am telling you, <laughs> I am. On last the name, yeah. Rob, I am on the chop Robinson bandwagon. I want him. I would love to see him in a Miami Dolphins uniform. If the Dolphins do not go offensive lineman in the first round, give me Chop Robinson. But there is another player that is really good that I know you like, and I know a lot of people like because he's been in their mock drafts. Uh, say his name for me because every time I try to say Latu, 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 okay? Latu, Latu. And, and let me tell you, UCLA product wearing number 15. Kind of looks like a guy we already have on our roster. Six foot five, 259 pounds. He's really good. Tell me what you think about Latu and why Latu is going to be a really good player in this football league. He's the overall best defensive talent in the draft. The overall best clear cut defensive player. Could be a Hall of Famer. Like, like literally has the talent to be a Hall of Famer. He, he is the. If you mash together, you know, Jason Taylor and Jalen Phillips, and yeah, this is what you can get. You can get a guy who is wanting to rush the passer, and then the guy just throws the ball. He's going to jump up like he's going to dunk the ball, take it, and intercept it, run it to the house as a pass rusher. Like, Jason Taylor did that better than almost any defensive edge ever was scoring touchdowns from that position, whether it's scooping up fumbles or just – finding and just getting a pick six from the quarterback, just whatever. I think he could do that in a relative sense. No one's Jason Taylor. No one's ever going to be Jason Taylor, even Jalen Phillips. But I just get such vibes of that lineage. You know what I mean? If you're looking for the next one, the next guy, the poor man version of the mini version, you know, Latu is just an absolute monster, playmaker extraordinaire, Obviously, he had that neck issue. He was out two years. He transferred from Washington to UCLA. But that's so it's even a sexier pick for Chris Greer, if you ask me. It's so, it's so weird, the UCLA guy wearing number 15 having a I know. big injury. injury. That Same could, thing. That could have ended his career and then having a resurgence. Now, obviously, it was the other way around with Jalen Phillips leaving UCLA going to Miami. But... Um, Look, I mean, if if if, if Latu is there at twenty one, <laughs> let me see, tell you something right now. <laughs> We're gonna be screaming for joy. See the funny. See, here's the thing that like, Chop Robinson and Latu are the two guys that if the Dolphins do not go offensive lineman and they have an opportunity to pick one of those two guys, I, I think it's an amazing pick. Amazing. What's important about the trenches in this draft? is, look, right now the Dolphins are sitting at first and second, 21 and 55. Yep. Yep. And, it's and it's 100 picks, 100 plus picks until they go again without making a trade. So right. if you're going to take care of both trenches and you don't go with an offensive tackle in the first, that means you have to, you essentially have to take one of the guys that we've mentioned. 100%. So if, if that said, there are guys like either Verse or like, one of them may be there. Both of them won't. Mm -hmm. Dolphin fans, I'm putting all this wall up on a bet if both of them are available. There's no chance. If Latu falls because of injury concern, 
save one or two other prospects being available that I don't believe will that are on the offensive line tackles. Let's call them the two TFs, Talis Fouad or Troy Fountainu. Four guys in my mind are non-tradable out if they're available. Latu, Latu is verse, one of them. Correct. Latu versus Fuagua Fatanu. That's realistically guys who could literally be, be 16, 17, 18, I, I, 19. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I think Chop Robinson's in there for me too. That's fine. I'll take that with one or two picks of a wiggle room, meaning that there are three or four guys that, and if we do this math, if a quarterback is available in the 21 and a team calls and it's tolerable to move back and still stay in that first round and pick up a pick or two, you're moving back anywhere from a couple of picks to six tops. Or even if it's not a quarterback, maybe it's a quarterback. Maybe it's a, a wide receiver that we don't want to necessarily address. If it's a position of max value that someone really is desperate to jump up for, yep. and we can either get 26, 27, 28, yep. a chop, um, if, if Newton's there, um, or if Graham Barton, or if you want to go Jackson Power Johnson there, that, that that's yep. okay too. If you're getting plus picks and one of these guys, someone is getting drafted from 25 to 28 on another team where the Dolphins would have loved to have had him anyway. So there's going to be talent. It's just a matter of who the Dolphins grade at as their first round talent. La last thing I'll say is if Latu or Chop Robinson are drafted by the Bills or the Jets or the Patriots, I'm going to cry because those two guys are legit potential like stars in the NFL. Stars. Fortunately, I think you're safe. With, um, well, the Jets could maybe go a lot to. No, they need. They're gonna probably go with Bowers. They're gonna go. With That's my prediction. It'll be very sure. interesting to see. All right, hey, look. Uh, if you enjoyed our on the clock series, I think we're going to do one more before the draft, and it's going to be secondary. We're going to look into corners and we're going to look into safeties uh, because I, I think that there's a chance that the Dolphins are probably going to do that towards the back end of the draft. And there might be one or two guys that, if they're there tell you what. in the first or second round, it, tell you what. <laughs> there's a couple of guys that definitely you know could be on the radar of Chris Greer. Um, depending on best player available, or where it is we're picking, so on and so forth. So I think it'll be very interesting to kind of see. We're going to do one more of On the Clock series, Clock Blockers exclusive. Jason Sarney, myself, to be on the lookout for that. And as a reminder, Thursday night, 7 p.m., if you are not turned in, tuned in to Dolphins Talk, I don't know what you're doing because it's not going to be just me. It's not going to be just Jason Sarney. It's going to be the whole crew of Dolphins Talk, and I am excited. Big Mike, Big E will be live doing a live hit. We're going to have uh, Bearded Fanatic. We're going to have Manny. We're going to have Josh. We're going to have uh, uh, Tom. We got the whole crew, baby. We got the Aaron. We got the whole crew on Thursday and Friday night. It's going to be a lot of fun, so be on the lookout for that. Jason, where can the people find you on social media, man? Don't find me on social media. Find me on DolphinsWire.com and on Dolphins Talk. With social media, stay away. No, I'm kidding. Twitter, <laughs> Jason underscore Sarney. Jason underscore Sarney. Super excited about it. You can follow me at Stephen D. SKPL. Spread kindness, positivity, and love. For Clock Blockers exclusive on the clock, Jason Sarney, myself, Stephen Daniels. Till the next time, peace.